If y'all would give the worship team a hand of praise this morning. Sometimes y'all make it hard to come up here and worship the Lord. Sometimes y'all got that, that ugly face on. Y'all know what that ugly face is. Mm, I don't even want to be here today. Has anybody had that ugly face on before? Jesus is watching, I tell the truth. I'm so glad you guys are here this morning. I believe without a shadow of a doubt that God has something for you today. The question is, will you apply it to your life? How many of you know knowledge is good? Knowledge is a beautiful thing. But if you don't apply it, it's just simply knowledge. If you don't do anything with it, it's just knowledge. Some people say knowledge is power. I believe the application of knowledge is power. Knowledge informs you, but the application of it is what empowers you. And I believe that's what the word of God is. It's not for you just to read it. It's for you to apply it. It's for you to apply it to your life. Whether it feels good or it doesn't. I mean, you know, sometimes it doesn't feel good. But how I many of you know God didn't call us to live by what feels good? My mama used to tell me, what's good to you is not good for you. Y'all act like y'all don't know that. Some of y'all still paying the consequences of you doing what was good to you. But it just wasn't good for you. Today, the title of the message is simply this. First things first. You know, I know, and you know, it's kind of a cliche in society. In the culture, it's a cliche, first things first. See, but I believe there's some biblical truth to that. First things first. How many of you know that when we apply biblical principles to our life, it has a direct listen to me it has a direct impact it directly dictates the blessings we will or will not walk in the application of God's word will directly dictate the blessings you will or you will not walk in. It's great that you're here on Sundays and you come and hear the word or you come to Sunday morning education and you hear the lesson, but if you don't apply it, you don't get the benefits of that principle. How many of you have children? You raise your children to say, when you do these things, these are the benefits. When they're younger sometimes, you do a lot for them. But there comes a point in time where you've taught them and you expect them to apply the principles that you've taught them because there's benefits on the other side. Would you agree? So let me share with you that God is no different. You are his children and there are principles that he has in his word that if you apply them to your life, 
there's benefits on the other side. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all other things will be added. It says, Seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness. So in other words, God should be first in our life. See, that's what the theme of this year is about. The theme this year is total surrender. God is looking for you and I to put him in his rightful place as first. How many of you know the order of God is God first, it's your spouse, it's your children, it's work, then it's ministry. But who's first? And when he's not first, everything is out of order. And chaos abounds in your life. When God's not first, it creates chaos. Putting God first doesn't mean Everything's going to go perfect in your life. Putting God first doesn't mean everything is going to go my way. Putting God first doesn't mean that I'm going to get everything. Nothing's going to go wrong in my life. Everything's going to go in my favor. See, sometimes I think as Christians we believe that. But the reality is... Just because I put God first doesn't mean that I won't experience life. But you know what I do know is I would rather face adversity with everything in order versus everything in chaos. If I'm going to face adversity, which you are, Everybody say, I'm going to face adversity. If I'm going to face adversity, I would rather face it knowing that everything is in order instead of everything being in chaos. I would rather face it knowing that God is first in my life and he's priority in my life and that when adversity comes, I know he's right there with me. The principle I want to talk today, talk about today, is the principle of first fruits. This ministry has taught first fruits for a long time. And to this day, I believe it's a principle with a promise. If you apply it to your life, it's a principle with a promise. First things first. Exodus chapter 13, verses 12 through 13 says this. That you shall set apart to the Lord all that open the womb. That is, every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have, the males shall be the Lord's. Listen to me. He was trying to to teach them. Moses is trying to teach the people. He's saying, look, everything that comes out of a womb, every animal that comes out of the womb, all of your males that come first should be offered unto the Lord. Now, why is that important? Understand something. The male carries the seed. See, that was their best. The male carries the seed. And Moses is trying to teach them that you need to plant seeds. You've got to plant seeds in your life. Some of you 
or facing something you've never faced before. Some of you are in a place that you've never been before. And God is challenging you today to plant a seed, a seed of faith, a seed not knowing what's to come, not knowing what's on the other side, but to plant a seed of faith. See, that's what faith is. It's you doing it, having no idea what's on the other side. It's planting a seed. See, we all are going to have a harvest. But if you haven't planted anything, then your harvest is bad. You can't look at the person who has a large harvest and say, man, I want that harvest. Because you know how they got that harvest? They planted seeds. See, God is trying to teach us that in your relationship, see, nobody wants to plant seeds. Everybody just wants a harvest. But a harvest doesn't come. Ask any farmer if a harvest comes without planting seeds. If you don't plant seeds, there is no harvest. You can go out there and look all you want to. You can go out there and pray to the Lord all you want to. You're going to pray till you blue in the face. But if you haven't sown any seeds, it's just going to be that same dirt you're looking at. It's going to be a bunch of weeds and no harvest. Or either your harvest is going to be the weeds. So Moses is trying to teach them to plant seeds. So verse 13 says this, but every firstborn of a donkey shall be redeemed with a lamb. And if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. And all the firstborn of man among your sons, you shall redeem. In Old Testament law, the firstborn had to be sacrificed or redeemed. It had to be sacrificed or redeemed. So the firstborn males redeemed everything after it. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. When it talks about the donkey, the donkey was considered unclean. So this is what he said. He said, but every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. How many of you understand that you and I were the donkeys in this story? Take that how you will. I said, pastor said donkey. We are the donkey in the story. We are the thing that is unclean. And the only way for us to be redeemed was by a lamb. The only way for us to be clean was that the firstborn had to be sacrificed so the rest could be redeemed. See, this is the principle of the first. The first redeems the rest. See, we were unclean. Jesus came. Jesus was God's first fruit offering. God had no idea that we were going to come along. He didn't know whether we were going to say yes or no. It really didn't matter to him. Because what he said was this, if I give my best, 
if I sacrifice my first, everything else that comes after him is holy. Everything that comes after him is redeemed. You're not holy because of you. Lord knows you're not holy because of you. I'm not holy because of me. I'm holy because God sacrificed his first. And because he sacrificed his first, now I'm redeemed and now I'm holy. God is not asking you and I to do anything that he hasn't done. His first fruit offering was his son. Jesus was clean. Jesus was perfect. Jesus was the best. See, you and I, if we had, be honest, we get that cow, and that cow was good, it's growing big, it's nice, it's full, 1,600 pounds, you take that to the butcher, you're going to get some good ribeyes. But Jesus told them, that's the one I want. I want that one. <laughs> and if you give me that one, everything after it will be redeemed. Everything after it will be good. Everything after it will be better than what you thought it would. The principle of first fruits is very powerful for this reason. Any first thing that is given to God, listen to me, any first thing that is given to God is never lost. Because God redeems it. Any first thing that is given to God, if that's your baby, give him to the Lord. If that's your finances, give them to the Lord. If that's your career, give it to the Lord. If that's your spouse, give it to the Lord. Any first thing that is given to the Lord will be redeemed. You might be looking at your life right now going, why is my life in chaos? What have you given to the Lord? What is your first? Or are you just giving leftovers? I'm not going. Anything that is given to God is never, anything first that is given to God is never lost because God redeems it. But what is withheld from God, what is withheld from God, you lose it. That scripture said, and if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. Because it's going to be no value to you. You're going to lose it. See, when you don't give your first and you keep it, shoot, that money going to burn a hole in your pocket. It's going to be like you are putting money in a bag that has a hole in the bottom of it. Is there anybody that has more month than they do money? <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 35 and 36 says this. It says, we take responsibility. Somebody say responsibility. Y'all know it now. You can't get away. You can't run out now. I got somebody standing at the door. The doors are locked. You can't run out now. It says this. We take responsibility 
for delivering annually to the temple of God the first fruits mm. of our crops and our orchards, our firstborn sons and cattle, and the firstborn from our herds and the flocks for the priests who serve in the temple of our God, just as it is set down in the revelation. So our responsibility is to give first fruits annually. This is not offerings, this is not tithes, this is first fruits. Annually, one time a year. Somebody say one time a year. But what did he ask for? He asked for the first fruits. God wants your first. See, back then, everybody farmed. So it was crops. It was cattle. It was all of that. But what he wanted was their first. He wanted their very best. He didn't want their leftovers. We have come to a place to where we want to give God leftovers and then we expect him to give us our bless, our be his best and bless our leftovers. You give everything else your best and leave God for what's left. How many people are married in here? What happens when you give your spouse your leftovers? I ain't talking about dinner. I ain't talking about dinner. What happens when you give your spouse your leftovers emotionally? What happens when you give them your leftovers physically? What happens when you give them your leftovers mentally? There's a problem that's created. If it's not good for your marriage, what makes you think it's good for our marriage between God? See, God uses our earthly marriage to explain our marriage to him. He, he's the bridegroom. We are the bride. And we are in relationship. In the same way that you are in relationship with your spouse. God does not want your leftovers. The very person that has equipped you and given you the ability to do what you do is the very, we bite the hand that feeds us. God wanted the first regardless regardless whether they knew what was coming afterwards. Let me see if this sounds like some of y'all. Well, I'm going to give. I'm going to give my first fruits. But I need to get, I need to wait till I come back from vacation. I need to wait till I come back from vacation before I give it to make sure I got enough to give my first fruits. You might as well keep it. Because you done defeated the whole purpose. Because now you depending on you and you giving God your leftovers. You know what he did to Cain when Cain brought him his leftovers? He rejected it. He didn't accept it. God ain't looking for your leftovers. He gave you his best, his son. There's about 10 of you that, that are okay with that. He gave you his best. He gave you royalty. He gave you all of heaven. He gave you everything. Your inheritance is his. He gave you his very best. We weren't even deserving. We weren't Jews. We were unclean. We were Gentiles. 
And even though <laughs> we weren't initially welcome, he created a way for us to be part of the family. He adopted us. He gave us his last name. He gave us his inheritance. And he says, everything that belongs to me belongs to you. And our response is, oh, well, wait, let me, let me see if I got any left over. Let me see if I got anything left over. Lord, you know my kids play five sports, and they got to have shoes and uniforms, and they got to have, they got to travel, and they got to do all of this, and they got to do all. That's why you should give your first fruits first, so the rest can be blessed. You're only cursing yourself. But then, where did he say to bring it? He said, give your first fruits annually and bring it where? Yeah. To the temple, to the house. Bring it to this place. the local church. There ain't nothing wrong with giving to missionaries, but that's not where your first fruits should go. There's nothing wrong with giving to nonprofit organizations, that's not where your first fruits should go. Scripturally, it says it goes here. This is not a money grab. Y'all hear me talk about finances two times a year. This is not a money grab. This is a biblical principle that if you apply it to your life, you'll see change come forth. This is a principle with a promise that if you apply it, you'll see things change. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 through 10 says this. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. How I many you know giving your first fruits is honoring the Lord? It is honoring the Lord. It is one of the ways that you and I have the ability to honor the Lord. See, total surrender this year was for every area of your life. See, because you know what I know is that where your money goes, that's where your heart is. See, if you look at my bank account, you'll see H-E-B a lot. You'll see restaurants a lot. You'll know where my heart is. See, if I look at your account, where's your heart? Where's your heart this morning? See, honoring the Lord is with every aspect of our life. Some people say, well, Pastor, I'm going to honor him with my time. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so glad that you're going to honor the Lord with your time. But the Bible says your possessions. Y'all got quiet on me on that one. Well, Pastor, I'm going to honor the Lord with my gifts. Thank you, Jesus. He gave them to you. You should honor the Lord with your gifts. But the scripture says, with your possessions, with your stuff, with how you make money. See, because I know in this scripture, we talked about cows and crops and all, but you ain't doing none of that. You ain't raising no cattle. You ain't planting no vegetables. You eating some, 
but you ain't planting any. So for us today, it's talking about how we make money. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your what? Increase. All your increase. So, if the way you make money is you work at McDonald's, you a doctor, you a lawyer, you a teacher, you a construction worker, you clean buildings, whatever the way your increase comes, this says honor the Lord with your first. I can't afford to do that. You can't afford not to do that. You don't understand, I can't afford to do that. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Because if you give your first, it redeems everything else. Whatever else is coming after that is redeemed. It's holy. How many of you want your fine? Man, this is, a, this is a principle that's telling you that if you give your first, your finances will be holy. Do you understand that? <laughs> He's saying that if you give your first fruits, it will redeem everything else that comes in for you for the rest of the year and declare it to be holy. God wants to bless every area of your life. Listen, he ain't saying you're going to be rich. He said he would redeem it and it would be holy. It would be acceptable to him. Shoot, y'all missing that. It would be acceptable to him. If your first fruit offering is acceptable to the Lord, he will make everything else holy. And it says, but when we do this, our barns will be filled with plenty and vats will overflow. In other words, you will lack for nothing. This is bigger than money. This is bigger than money. You will lack for nothing. You will lack for nothing. Your household will be healthy. Your babies will be healthy. Your vehicles will last. Your house won't need those additional repairs. God will keep you and he will keep your possessions and he will keep your stuff and you will look at the end of the month and go, how in the world did I end this month like this? Because you gave your first fruits and the Lord redeemed it and it's holy now. See, your increase could be one day's wage. See, your first fruit could be one day's wage. It could be one week's wage. It could be two weeks wage. It could be a month's wage. It, you and Jesus have to determine that. But the first of your increase, that's what God is looking for. We expect his best. Let me ask you again. Do y'all expect God's best? Do you expect God's best? Do you expect God to give to you half-heartedly? It's not a trick question. You don't have to be scared to answer. Do you expect... I know what it is. You just understand the weight of the responsibility of what I'm asking. Do you expect... God to half-heartedly give to you? Has God ever half-heartedly given to you? 
They said, no, let me ask this side. Do you expect God to have heartily give to you? Has he ever have heartily given to you? Now, do things always go your way? I can tell you for sure it doesn't. Sometimes life sucks. I'm just being honest with you guys. I don't want to lie to you. I don't want to stand up here and tell you life is puppy dogs and rainbows because you have Jesus. It's not. Life sucks sometimes. That's the reality of it. That's the truth of the matter. Life sucks sometimes. People suck sometimes. And sometimes church people are the worst. I'm just being honest with you. It's stuff that y'all go home and say anyway. It's stuff y'all at home talking about, cracking jokes about. Pastor be up there really thinking that these people love the Lord. Church people are horrible. Life is hard sometimes. Sometimes things don't turn out the way we think they should or the way we want them to turn out. But the one thing that has never changed is God. He is faithful to us. He is faithful to us. Even when we don't deserve it. How many of you know we don't deserve it sometimes? Even when we don't deserve it, he is faithful to us. Faithful to us. And he's right. And when we're brokenhearted, he's the closest to us. That's what the Bible says. He's close to the brokenhearted. What I know is is that if you will give your first, there will be a transformation in your life. There might be somebody in here that says, well, that's an Old Testament principle. That's only for the Old Testament. But you know what's funny about God? God said this. Malachi 3.6, he said this. He said, I am the Lord and I do not change. That's what he said. So what's good for the Old Testament is good for the new. In the Old Testament, adultery was wrong. So if the Old Testament doesn't count, does that now mean that adultery is okay? Well, wait a minute. How can you cherry pick? How can you cherry pick and say adultery is okay? But first fruits principle is not. How can you say that? That means you ain't totally surrendered. And you cherry picking what you want God to do. Go on and keep cherry picking because what you're doing is you're scattering your seed. And you ain't going to never have. They say never say never. I'm telling you now, you will never have a consistent harvest. Because your seed is scattered all over the place. You might get something right here, but you might not get nothing for five years. You only keep scattering your seed. Last scripture. Look at that. It's in, it's in the New Testament. 
Romans 11 verse 16 says this, for if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. So in other words, the Lord is saying what is first is dedicated to me and it makes it holy. So he said, if your first fruit is holy, because it's first, then the whole lump is holy. I don't know about you, but I want the lump to be holy. See, I know y'all get antsy when pastor gets up here and talks about money. But this is bigger than money. This is a first fruit principle. This is a principle of first. Whatever you offer to the Lord first, it's redeemed, including your first fruits. So today I'm going to do this. Ushers, if you, uh, board of trustees, if you'll come help me. I want to do this. This is First Fruit Sunday. This is your opportunity. If you haven't, if you didn't come prepared to give your first fruit, that's okay. You can give it next week. You can give it the week after that. But don't hold out too long waiting to see if you got anything left. Don't hold out too long waiting to see and trying to give God the leftovers. Don't give God the leftovers. Give God your very best. Only you know if you've been given your very best. Only you know. You guys don't have to stay. You guys don't have to stay. Man, it looked like an army behind me. <laughs> Y'all made me nervous. But this is what I want to do. I want, before you leave, before you leave today, I, I can't keep you here. I unlock the doors so you're free to go. But I want you to do this. Before you leave, I want you and your family, you, your spouse, if your kid's not up here, that's okay. If they are up here, I want you guys, we're going to form a line here, down the middle. And you and your family have the ability to go to any of the buckets that are open. And you stand there and have an intimate moment with God. And you tell him, Lord, this is my first fruit offering. And I, we as a family or sowing this in faith. Father, we believe that when we give this, you are going to redeem the rest and you are going to take care of everything that's happening in our life. You're sowing a seed of faith. And if you don't have your first fruit offering today, come and do it in faith. Okay? And say, Okay, God, I don't have it, but I'm going to sow it, and I'm going to bring something next week. I'm going to bring something in the next two weeks. I'm going to bring something in the next month, but I'm going to sow my first fruit offering because I don't want the lump to be cursed. I want the lump to be holy. So I'm going to give you guys that opportunity. Um, Teresa, will you bring me that prayer card? Please. I'm gonna read the prayer, I'm gonna do the prayer card, and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna allow you guys to stand. You can form two lines right down the aisle with you and your family, and then as the buckets are open, you can go to the buckets and you can give, you can sow your first fruit offering, and if you don't have it today, then go home tonight and begin to seek the Lord about what it is you should give and then bring it back the next week. 
or the week after that and sow your first fruit offering, okay? Um, but I want you guys to agree in prayer with me. We believe in the prayer of agreement, okay? Again, the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst. So Jesus is here. And it says this, our friend Cynthia Mesa of Fort Worth asked us to turn in a prayer request for her brother Pete Morales. He was diagnosed with stage two cancer and is having surgery. She believes in the power of prayer. How many people believe in the power of prayer? This is what, this is what I want you to do. I want you to agree with me. I want you to put your faith with my faith. And we're going to believe for Pete Morales that God do a miracle in his life. See, because if this was your family, you would want the same thing. If this was your baby or your brother or your cousin, you'd want, or your friend, you'd want the same thing. So put your faith with my faith. We're going to pray. And then once we pray, I'm going to allow you guys to form two lines, and then you can come and you can give your first fruit offering. And once you've given your first fruit offering, you are free to go home and enjoy the rest of your day, okay? Okay, pray with me. Father, this day I thank you. I thank you for the God that you are. I thank you because you are amazing. I thank you because you are faithful. And I thank you because you love your people. This day, on behalf of Robert and Lupe Gonzalez, we lift up Pete Morales, Father, and we recognize that he has been diagnosed with stage two cancer, but we also recognize that you are God Almighty and you have the final say so. God, I, you know, I don't know what's going on in his life and where it is, God, but he's been diagnosed with stage two cancer and we place him in your hands. Father, we know that you are the God with the gift of healings and Father, we declare and we ask that you would send forth your Holy Spirit to send forth the gift of healings to Pete this day. Lord, and I pray from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord, that you do a work in his life. Father, give him the strength that he needs to overcome. Give him the peace that he needs to overcome, the peace that would guard his heart and his mind. Lord, give him that peace this day in Jesus' name. And we wait for a good report from the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.